I'm not lying to you when I say this. This is my game of the year. That is, of course, until Shin Megami Tensei 5 comes out. And the reason why I say that is this is probably the most fun I've had this entire year. This is my review of Super Monkey Ball Banana Mania. Before I start this video, I did get this code from Sega, uh, Danny over at Sega, you are very cool. Banana Mania has a ton of different things you can choose, but let's start off with the story mode. Let's just say that these are of no consequence entirely. They play out in these sort of like comic book style cutscenes on a TV instead of in the original where they were fully rendered 3D cutscenes. And to me, it just looks really cheap. I personally wish they would have just put the original cutscenes in the game, maybe at widescreen. That's just me though. Getting onto the game though, it is actually quite different from the original, but at the same time it still holds the same magic, if you will. If you've played the original games, then you'll notice immediately that the physics are quite different, but not in a bad way, they're just different. This means that certain complex skips are either extremely difficult or next to impossible. Though with the new physics, people are already finding new tricks, so... Hey, but with these new physics, I have found some harder levels from Monkey Ball 2 to be easier here, but then some levels from Monkey Ball 2 are much harder here. Supposedly, the physics were changed to where pinpoint accuracy is much easier, but trying to do tricks is more difficult. So in the story mode, there's a total of 90 levels, but in the entire game itself, there's over 300. If you want to play the other 200 levels, you're going to have to go to the challenge mode. It's basically a gauntlet of levels where you play a certain amount of levels and you try to get the lowest time as possible, depending on the difficulty you select, of course. I'm personally not the biggest fan of the challenge mode, but I know a ton of people are, so it might be up your alley. Getting back to the story mode, these levels have been faithfully recreated from the originals. Unfortunately, minus a few exceptions. Anything that uses the Amusement Vision name or logo has been stripped entirely, which does modify some stages, also minigames. Though honestly, I feel like this is something that next to no one will actually care about. It's just something to note. And if all you're here is for is for the stages, then honestly, this is pretty good. They're fun, intricate, and they're pretty challenging if you're up for it. Though if you're not up for it, there's actually pretty good accessibility options. This includes slowing down time and adding little arrows to point you to the goal. Let's Let's go on to the mini games. Unfortunately, they're much less impressive than the actual game. In short, most of these mini games have pretty bad controls. In Monkey Target specifically, it feels like you're fighting the controls 9 times out of 10, because you drop like an absolute rock and it's almost impossible to get to the goal if you're not familiar with the controls from the original game. Monkey Boat is easily the jankiest thing I think I've ever played. It just doesn't feel good. It's pretty hard to hit a home run in Monkey Baseball, let alone even hit the baseball at all. The rest of the minigames are fine enough, just not something I'm clamoring to play. You've probably noticed already, but I've been playing as other Sega characters, and that's because they're guest characters here, which I think is pretty cool. You can play as Kiryu, Sonic, Tails, and Beat. It's kind of sad how this is the most attention Jet Set Radio has gotten literal years, but I digress. And if you're so inclined, you can pay a total of $15 to get Morgana, Hello Kitty, and Suezo, whoever he is. I'm not a big fan of Sega releasing characters like this because they really shouldn't be $5. They don't have voice lines, Morgana's animations are reused entirely from Persona 5, and you can't even use them in minigames. So, they're so limited, but they want $5 for them? Yeah, let's just say I won't be buying these. Though I will say, the Sega Legends pack is probably the best DLC hands down. I mean, who doesn't want to play as a Sega Dreamcast? However, the game does have cosmetic options and they're 100% free. I feel like I would wear pink, right? Let's talk about the soundtrack. With the Digital Deluxe Edition, or by paying separately, you can get the original compositions, or if you want, you can just play with the remixes that are included in the game. I'm not a fan of it being a paid option, but at least it's there in the first place, unlike a certain other remaster from Sega. I'm also happy to report that as far as I can tell, this game is pretty glitch free. I will say though, the PC port is very, very basic, though it's a monkey ball game, I don't expect the most graphical options in the world, so I'll give it a pass. As far as the new compositions go, they're just okay. 
I'm not the biggest fan, but I don't hate him or anything. I left the new music on for the review, obviously, but when I go back to playing this, I'll definitely turn them back to the original. In conclusion, this is easily one of the best Monkey Ball games in years. Although it has a couple of issues, it's still definitely worth playing. If you want a fun puzzle platformer, this will definitely do it for you. And this game is hopefully another step to maybe a brand new Monkey Ball game. I really do hope this does so well. Oddly enough, the Switch version is completely out of stock at all my local stores which is kind of weird but a good sign I guess also I must apologize to Danny from Sega I said I would have this review done like last week <laughs> let's just say it is no longer last week um, real life got in the way unfortunately you know it'd be like that but I do have another monkey ball video planned where I try to play it on the lowest end hardware I have so that'll be fun. I think that's it. See ya.